Minnetonka's Terry Bonhoff, after a long and distinguished business career, won an election to the Minnesota State Senate more than 11 years ago, representing Minnetonka, Woodland, and portions of Plymouth. Since then, Senator Bonhoff has made a mark in St. Paul as an effective advocate on both sides of the partisan aisle for early childhood and higher education and workforce development. She's also been a resident and practical voice for small business, better affordable health care, the environment, and reducing government waste. She's accomplished this by truly living up to her campaign slogan of uniting the middle. That is to say, she works with all of the legislatures to get practical and real results for all of her constituents. Terry, welcome to Democratic Visions. Thank you very much, Tim. Now, as we all know, in November, the voters in the 3rd Congressional District can send Eric Paulson, the Republican incumbent, packing and <laughs> send you on to Washington. Terry, tell us a little bit about your background. Tell our viewers uh, what, what, what are they going to get when they elect you to Congress? Well, thank you very much for having me, and thank you for that question. So I'm actually a third generation, third district resident. I've, uh, my grandfather started Jackson Graves in 1946. My father left uh, his service in the Army to work for my grandpa, and I joined the family business after that. So not only have I lived in the third district my whole life, but I'm a third generation businesswoman as well. I started in the family business, but then moved on to Tonka Toys, where I was a manager of promotional services, did their PR, their promotions, and their marketing communications, and ended really a 20-year business career as the first woman Vice President, General Manager at Navarre Corporation, where I led their uh, largest division, the Computer Products Division. I started at uh, Navarre when that division was 25 million, and when I left, it was over 200 million in sales. So, wow, so how yeah. does that translate into politics, that business background? When I left Navarre, I did sort of be home with four teenagers, and that was a wonderful thing. You, might, you may have rethought that <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> right, but I, I was home for um, that time and got very involved in the community, whether it be my kids' schools, I was a president of uh, the Babe Ruth Baseball League, I was on the Minnetonka Planning Commission, and I saw many ways that I felt as though we ought to be doing better on behalf of our community. So in particular, education. So I ran for the state senate to make a mark in education, as well as to deliver government services. We all, you know, people in business always say they should run it more like a business. And people in government say they don't understand. But actually, it can be run more like a business. And so I brought that sensibility to my work in the legislature. So just one example of how that plays out. We in the state government have many different agencies. And in each agency, they would have all the infrastructure, for example, say for IT. And so IT would be housed in each agency as a complete unit. And there was so much duplication and waste. So I actually worked with a former representative, Keith Downey, and Phyllis Kahn, and the three of us carried legislation to consolidate IT, which we did, and we've now saved the state of Minnesota over $45 million just from doing that. So bringing that kind of business approach to my work, and then I uh, worked in the area of education, and so I'll be happy to share about that as well. Well, uh, but, th but that's illustrative of the fact that you were working with Republicans, because Keith Downey represented uh, my house district uh, as a Republican for right. a number of years. Yes. I don't want to be pejorative, but your opponent in the 3rd Congressional District race, uh, Eric Paulson, I describe him as a career politician. Now, I'm aware that he had a kind of a part-time job while he was serving in the state legislature, but it seems to me that with that business background, you have the ability to get things done that haven't been accomplished by Mr. Paulson to date. Do you agree with that? I have carried with me the lessons I learned in business with everything I've done, and I know I would do that in Washington. So, you know, the lesson of having a sound strategy in everything you do, of using creativity as uh, how to address serious challenges, and most importantly, bringing discipline to my work. And so that's what I've done at the State Senate. That's what I would do in Congress. For example, I talk about the Affordable Care Act. Here's something that desperately needs reforming. This Congress, improvement. yes, yep. improvement. The Republicans have been trying to throw that out, Mr. Paulson included, continually vote to overthrow it, whereas it needs 
work exactly and ignoring any opportunity they might have to cure the problems right so he's voted I think 60 times 60 right to repeal the Affordable Care Act so that's not effective that's not leadership you have to be willing to roll up your sleeves and do the work that's necessary to reform it and I bring up the Affordable Care Act because we've got a serious situation in Minnesota We've got Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to be pulling out of the individual market. Many people are going to lose their health insurance, are going to have to go back out and get new health insurance. And we believe that the premiums are going to be significantly higher. So I would directly correlate that problem with the ineffectiveness in Congress. Because, for example, if Congress had said, okay, small businesses who carry the burden of the health insurance costs and of making sure that each and every employee has health insurance. If Congress had said, all right, you small business, you can have pre-tax dollars to give to your employees in really the style of, say, a voucher where they can go to the individual market to get insurance. Now you could take the problem of these weak individual exchanges that are filled with people who are very ill mm -hmm. and low income, mm -hmm. and you could drive healthy people there. If you could do that, you would keep the costs down, you would preserve the strength of the individual marketplace, and you wouldn't have the problems we have. But yet, because they focused on this repeal rather than reform, now we're going to be in a situation where people in our community and people in Minnesota are going to have some very tough times ahead when it comes to health care. Your opponent, Eric Paulson, styles himself a moderate, but my review of his record shows that he's anything but moderate in his approaches to uh, the uh, necessary business of the country. Can you draw some contrasts between yourself and uh, Representative Paulson, please? Well, for one thing, uh, the people of the 3rd District um, resoundingly rejected the um, ban on gay marriage, and I was never more proud of them when they did that. And yet, um, Congressman Paulson got an award for his efforts to actually put the ban on gay marriage into the Constitution. And so you might say, well, that's a social issue, and I would point to it and say it is becoming much more than that. Number one, it's just plain, you know, wrong and inconsistent with my values, but number two, it has a chilling effect on businesses and on the economy. So if you look at what happened in North Carolina and in Indiana, when the legislatures put discrimination into their laws with regard to the LGBT community, businesses left those states. And then in Georgia, where the legislature tried to do that, the Republican governor understood that that wasn't very smart, and so he vetoed that legislation. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Eric Paulson takes positions uh, that, number one, aren't consistent with what the people of the 3rd District believe, value, or want, and number two, they're actually antithetical to what's good for our economy and good for our environment. And just another shout out to the 3rd District, because the companies in our community have been leaders on this. Whether it be General Mills, Cargill, or Target, they have said they want to have policies that represent all the people in the community and that understand that all people should have equal right to be a part of our economy. Well, I can't speak to uh, the motivation behind Mr. Paulson's politics, but did you not receive an endorsement from the Human Rights Campaign? The HRC is the group, the Human Rights Campaign, that really stands for uh, the importance of not having bias due to gender orientation. So, so that covers that. But, but let me also say that I've been endorsed by Emily's List and Planned Parenthood because I am somebody who believes in women's access to all health care, um, whether it be reproductive or, or all health care. And um, my opponent is actually not pro-choice. Well, he's not pro-choice. <laughs> he voted to defund Planned Parenthood, did he, he did. not? He was a co-author of the bill to defund pa Planned Ridiculous. Parenthood. Ridiculous. And there was a letter that got sent to um, President Obama, uh, signed by many uh, members of Congress, and he was one of them that actually called Roe v. Wade a tragedy. Uh, well, there's probably tons of issues that distinguish you uh, from Representative Paulson, but let's talk about gun violence. Uh, what, what is your position with respect to guns and what is his position? I think we need leaders who aren't aligned with the NRA, but rather who are listening to the voice of the people to say, this has got to stop. So I would be for universal background checks. Um, I believe that if the FBI or other intelligence organizations have said that this person 
uh, is on a no-fly list or is a suspected terrorist, they shouldn't have any access to weapons. And Excuse me, but yeah. isn't it true that uh, Representative Paulson voted 13 times to block efforts to bring the no-fly, no-buy uh, gun safety measure that you just identified to the House floor? I do believe so, yes. Wow. Tim, the other thing is, you know, generals have said that military-style grade weapons, you know, don't have a place on our streets. Well, I know that Representative Paulson is a favorite of the NRA. He, he gets a very high grade. I, the last grade I saw was A- minus from that organization. I cannot believe that that reflects the sentiment of the typical voter in the 3rd Congressional District. I believe the 3rd District deserves to have representation that votes uh, consistent with the values of the voters, and that's what they could count on from me. So Terry, I know that you're out uh, meeting as many uh, residents of the 3rd District as humanly possible right. and probably working day and night. In fact, I know you're working day and night on this campaign. Yeah. What, yeah. what are the people that you're talking to? What, what are their concerns? What, what are they looking for in a representative that they're not getting at the present time? When I talk to people, I hear over and over that they're upset that people won't work together. You know, they are very upset about the partisan rancor and well, the your, gridlock. Your, your instance about the Affordable Care Act, which we all know it's got some problems, but right. why couldn't that thing be fixed over the last four years? It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So, and so the Affordable Care Act is one thing I do hear about. I hear from seniors that they're concerned about prescription drug costs and the fact that um, Medicare does not fully cover that. And so, um, Again, this is a solution that would have been pretty easy for them. They should have said the federal government can negotiate drug prices. That should not be that mysterious. We should definitely give the federal government that um, ability to do that. Another thing I hear about is gun safety. I mean, we did a survey, and that was the number one thing that was on people's minds, is they want laws passed that help keep um, our communities safe and prevent gun violence. It, it seems to me, and this is just a, a, a very broad and general observation, that you've got some right-wing zealots in Congress here, and you have some left-wing zealots here, but there's got to be a middle Sure, you'd like to work with this group and that group, but there's, there's got to be a broad middle that should be interested in getting things done. And unfortunately, in, at least in the House of Representatives, the right-wing zealots are controlling the agenda, or so it seems yeah, to me. absolutely. And, and I think Paulson's part of that right-wing agenda. Well, in terms of the gun violence, I mean, Paul Ryan, when he s would not bring that forward, I think he got so much grief that he tried to have some watered-down version, and he couldn't even bring that to the forefront. So that tells you that the leadership that is in place is not in the best interests of the people. It is truly standing with the NRA. And, you know, and that is just one example. So they talk about that. They talk about the concern around the environment. I mean, particularly our millennials are very engaged in this race. We had 30 interns working with me this summer. Really? Yeah. Nice. And they're very concerned about the Republican platform, the, you know, discriminatory uh, beliefs that are part of that platform, the anti-LGBT, uh, the fact that uh, they're not supporters of, you know, common sense um, efforts to curb global warming, you know, and that uh, not being pro-choice is actually part of that platform. And it's hard to believe that the Republicans who are in leadership and Congressman Paulson are on the wrong side of history on so many issues. I believe that we do have to conduct our um, campaigns and our elections in a more fair and respectful way. And so I'm also um, willing to point out where Congressman Paulson has done some things that are really good for our community. You know, his work on sex trafficking and, and his work he worked on... worked with Senator Klobuchar on that, did he not? Right, yeah, absolutely, in the medical device tax. Although, again, on the medical device tax issue, while that piece was good, making sure that um, that wasn't part of what paid for the Affordable Care Act, it's okay to take that away, but then you have to replace it. How are you going to have this thing work? Mm -hmm. So it's not personal. It's really a matter of records. Mm -hmm. And I think my mm -hmm. record and where I stand, my values, my vision, and my views is more consistent with the community. 
I think that you have very good prospects of unseating Representative Paulson, provided that you can tell the voters that uh, Representative Paulson is not a moderate. You could just point to his voting record, and that would dispel any notion to that effect. So that's a big challenge ahead of you to bring that information out to the voters. I'm sure you're going to do it. We'll do that. But it's, it's <laughs> going to be hard. I think you're providing the voters in the 3rd Congressional District with a clear choice and that you'll be a great representative. Well, thank Good you very you much. Good to see you, Tim. Democratic Visions is handcrafted by volunteers from Eden Prairie, Hopkins, Minnetonka, Edina, and Bloomington. Watch us on select cable systems and on our YouTube channel. This is Carol Sundstrom.